Let's talk about research. In this video, you will be able to understand the following concept. First, variables in experimental research, which includes independent, dependent, experimental, control, and extraneous variables. Second, constants and experimental units. And third, experimental designs. As a researcher, you're going to perform an experiment. Let's take this as an example. Julia wants to test the effect of sunlight on the growth of tomato plants. She prepared six big wooden boxes measuring 1.5 meters by 3 meters and placed equal amount of 1 kilogram loam soil. From the nursery, she picked up six uniformly sized tomato seedlings for planting on the boxes. She treated all planted tomatoes with 5 grams of organic fertilizer. Before separating the six boxes into two groups, three boxes of tomato seedlings placed inside a cabinet in the classroom without sunlight, and the other three boxes outside in the presence of sunlight, as she watered all with equal amount of water. In order for the setups placed outside not to be affected by the other variables like human urine and rain, Julia labeled the setups for experiment and observation, do not meddle. Then, she observed for difference in results daily for two weeks. With experimental design given, can you now answer the following question? Number one, state the hypothesis being tested. Two, name the independent and dependent variable. Three, identify the following treatments done in the study, constants, experimental unit. And number four, list the experimental variable and control variable in each treatment. But before that, let us first define variable. What is variable? Variables can be defined as any aspect of a theory that can vary or change as part of the interaction within the theory. In the other words, variable are anything that can affect or change the results of a study. Every study has variables, as these are needed in order to understand differences. There are two types of variable, the independent and the dependent variable. But before we proceed with the two types of variable, let us define first hypothesis, which is the very first question in this experiment. What is hypothesis? Hypothesis is a scientific guess that gives us the prediction of what study will find. It is an empirical statement that is verified based upon observation or experience. These are testable to be true or false through the research study findings. Variables relationship noted in hypothesis. Since hypothesis makes prediction, there are variables that are included in the hypothesis. A hypothesis is where we show the relationship between independent and dependent variable. Therefore, using a hypothesis, it is a starting point for each example that only allows us to see how variables operate in a research study but also gives us the benefit of understanding how they are part of the hypothesis. Therefore, the hypothesis in this experiment is that it was expected that the plants which were exposed to sunlight will grow taller. Okay, next question. Name the independent variable and dependent variable. Okay, let us define first independent and dependent variable. In experimental research, an investigator or the researcher manipulates one variable and measures the effect of that manipulation on another variable. The variable that the researcher manipulates is called the independent or manipulating variable. The independent variables are just those variables that may influence or affect the other variable. In our experiment, what did you manipulate? Is it the loam soil? Is it the fertilizer? Or its exposure to sunlight? Okay. The independent variable in the study is the presence or absence of sunlight. How about the dependent variable? The question is, 
What is being changed when you manipulated the independent variable? Or what is being affected or which receives the effect when you manipulate the independent variable? If your answer is the height of the tomato plants, then you are right. The outcome variable measured in each subject which may be influenced by manipulation of the independent variable is termed the dependent variable. In experimental studies where the independent variables are imposed or manipulated, the dependent variable is the variable thought to be changed or influenced by the independent variable. Again, the height of the tomato plants is our dependent variable. Let us proceed with the treatment. Do you have any idea what treatment is? We have here a table that shows the treatment was applied. As you can see, there are two setups. Setup A with three boxes which was placed outside the cabinet in two weeks, which has the presence of sunlight. The other one has three boxes also with the absence of sunlight and that was placed inside the cabinet. When we say treatment, it is something that the researchers administer to ad to experimental units. What did we apply in the experimental units? It is the presence of sunlight. Therefore, the treatment is the sunlight which can also be considered as our independent variable. In our experiment, what did we apply in our seedlings to see the result? If your answer is the presence of sunlight, then you're right. When we expose the plants in the presence of sunlight, that is the treatment. Meaning to say, it is something that the researchers administer to experimental units. Another example, a cornfield is divided into four. Each part is treated with different fertilizer to see which produces the most corn. Another example, a teacher practices different teaching methods on different groups in her class to see which yields the best results. A doctor treats a patient with skin condition which different creams to see which is the most effective. Treatments are administered to experimental units by level where level implies amount or magnitude. For example, if the experimental units were given 5 mg, 10 mg, 15 mg of a medication, those amounts would be 3 levels of treatment. What is experimental unit? In this experiment, the experimental unit is the tomato seedlings. Why? When we say experimental unit, it is the entity subjected to an intervention independently of all other units. Commonly, the individual study subject can be animal, person, or product. It is the experimental unit. Different Experimental units must be capable of receiving different experimental interventions. Failure to identify correctly the experimental unit is a common mistake which can result in incorrect conclusions. The experimental unit is the physical entity which can be assigned at a random to a treatment. Commonly, it is an individual animal. The experimental unit is also the unit of statistical analysis. Again, experimental unit is the physical entity which can be assigned at a random to a treatment. It is the entity subjected to an intervention independently of all other units. Let us proceed with a constant. What are constants in our experiment? The constants in our experiments are the six wooden boxes which pertains to the sizes and type of boxes. Next. 1 kg loam soil, which pertains to the amount of soil and the kind of soil. Next, same amount of water. 5 kg of organic fertilizer, which pertains to the amount of organic fertilizer and the kind of fertilizer. And the last one is the same type of seedlings, which pertains to the tomato seedlings. What is constant? Constants are values that do not change either during or between experiments. It is any aspect of an experiment that a researcher intentionally keeps unchanged throughout an experiment. What is a constant in an experiment and why is it important? Do you need a constant when performing science experiments? Can the constant change? Let's find out. There can be more than one constant in an experiment. A constant variable is any aspect of an experiment that a researcher intentionally keeps unchanged 
threw out an experiment. Let's apply this part in an ex example experiment. Say we want to know how long it takes an ice cube to melt. You can easily perform the experiment by putting an ice cube in a bowl on your kitchen counter and timing how long it takes to melt. This base experiment, the ice cube melting and the room temperature becomes your control. And different outcomes will be compared to this control. Now, say we want to see how long it takes an ice cube to melt at different temperatures. This time, we put one ice cube outside in the sun and one in the fridge. Changing the temperature will affect how long the ice takes to melt. Since the temperature changes, the temperature is an independent variable. The amount of time it takes the ice cube to melt is the dependent variable because this will change based on the independent variable. The constant in this experiment is the ice cube. It is the same size at least at first in each trial of the experiment. Now, let us differentiate control group from experimental group. What is the difference between the two? The control group is defined as the group in an experiment or study that does not receive treatment by the researchers and is then used as the benchmark to measure how the other tested subjects do. A control group is a scientific experiment, is a group separated from the rest of the experiment, where the independent variable being tested cannot influence the results. This isolates the independent variable's effects on the experiment and can help rule out ex alternative explanations of the experimental results. Control groups can be separated into two other types, the positive or the negative. Positive control groups are groups where the conditions of the experiment are set to guarantee a positive result. A positive control group can show the experiment is functioning properly as planned. However, the other, the other type of control group is the negative control groups, which are groups where the conditions of the experiment are set to cause a negative out outcome. How about the controlled variable? When we say controlled variable, it is one which the researcher holds constant or controls during an experiment. It is also known as the constant variable or simply as a control. The control variable is not part of an experiment, not the dependent and not the independent variable, but it is important because it can have an effect on the results. It is not the same thing as the control group. And what is the importance of having control variables? Although control variables may not be measured, they can have a significant effect on the outcome of an experiment. Lack of awareness of control variables can lead to faulty results or what we call confounding variables. Noting control variables makes it easier to reproduce an experiment and to establish the relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. For example, say you are trying to determine whether a particular fertilizer has an effect on the plant growth. The independent variable is the presence or absence of the fertilizer, while the dependent variable is the height of the plant or the rate of growth. If you don't control the amount of light, example, you perform part of the experiment in the summer and part of the winter, then you may skew your results. Let us now proceed with the experimental group. Experimental group is the group that receives an experimental procedure or a test sample. This group is exposed to changes in the independent variable being tested. The values on the independent variable and the result on the dependent variable are recorded. An experiment may include multiple experimental groups at one time. However, experimental variables are variables whose values are independent of changes in the values of other variables. What is extraneous variable? Extraneous variables are any variables that you are not intentionally studying in your experiment or test. When you run an experiment, you're looking to see if one variable, the independent variable, has an effect on other variable, which is the dependent variable. In an ideal world, you'd run the experiment, check the results, and voila! Unfortunately, like many things in life, it's a little more complicated than that. Other variables perhaps 
ones that never cross your mind may influence the outcome of an experiment. These undesirable variables are called extraneous variables. In our experiment, human urine and rain can be one of the examples that may ruin the result and may be the hindrance to get a conclusive and valid result. Now that we're done with the discussion, let us now take this quiz. Suppose a researcher wants to determine the effects of the different concentrations of marigold extract on egg yolk color samples. It was expected that the higher the concentration of marigold extract, the brighter the color of the egg yolk. To test its effectiveness, nine chickens with the same health conditions were fed with polished rice daily mixed with varied concentrations. 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% respectively of marigold extract within 45 days. On the other hand, the last chicken was fed with polished rice only. The marigold extracts were mixed with distilled water, and after the said experiment, these chickens laid eggs. Identify the following. Independent variable, dependent variable, constant, experimental unit, experimental